Number one tells us that we have a rocket that's launched in the air and its height in feet is modeled by the function h, which is graphed here for us. Select all true statements about the situation. A says that the, the rocket is launched from a height less than 20 feet above the ground. So the height is our vertical axis here. And so if we look, um, we're counting by 20s, right? So 20, 40, 60, 80. So this line right here is 20 feet and we can see that our graph starts below that. So this one is true. And B says the rocket is launched from about 20 feet above the ground, which is false because it's certainly below that. It's probably about 10 feet. C says that the rocket, the rocket reaches a maximum height after about three seconds. So the time is our horizontal. So we want to look here at three seconds. Is that about the maximum? And that's true. That looks like it's about the maximum. Then it says the rocket reaches its maximum height after 160 seconds, which is false. It's reaching it at three seconds. And if you look here, I mean, we only graph to eight seconds. So we'd have to get over here to 160 seconds. That's significantly outside of our graph. And that's because what the 160 actually is, is the height of our graph. So that's where the maximum happens is 160 feet above the ground. Number two, a baseball travels D meters T seconds after being dropped from the top of a building. The distance traveled by the baseball can be modeled by this equation. Complete the table and plot the data on the coordinate plane. So we're just going to plug these values into um, this function for T. So we have um, five times zero squared, which would give us zero. And so we'd plot the point zero, zero. Um, and then if we plug in 0. 0.5, so we have five times 0. 0.5 squared, which will give us 1.25. So at 0. 0.5, we're at 1.25. Plug in one. So five times one squared is five. And so at one, we're at five. Then five times 1.5 squared, which gives us 11.25. And then five times two squared, which gives us 20. So at two, we're at 20. Then it says, is the baseball traveling at a constant speed? Okay, so is it going up at a constant rate? Well, we see here it went up 1.25 meters, right? So it went from zero to 1.25. Then here it's going up 3.75. So it's it's the gap is getting wider. And then here it's 6.25 um, and so on. So no, the distance um, traveled is getting um larger. Number three, a rock is dropped from a bridge over a river. Which table could represent the distance fallen in feet as a function of time? So, you know, we've got, we've got some bridge here and then we're going to drop the rock. And then this distance that the rock travels is what we are looking for in this table. So how far has this rock fallen? Well, if the rock is here, right, that's a small amount, maybe one. And then as it keeps falling, then that gets, you know, for wider and wider. Um, and those are, it's going to start at zero. So how far has it fallen before it starts is zero. So the distance that it's fallen after one second um, isn't going to be 180, right? It hasn't traveled at all. So we can rule those out. Then we know as we drop something that gravity takes 
over and it's going to drop faster and faster as it goes. So it's not going to stay at a constant speed. So when we look here, after one second, it's moved 48 and then gone up another 48 and then gone up an, another 48. So this, this one's falling at a constant speed, which isn't going to happen because gravity is going to make make it go faster and faster as it falls. So here we have that it's going 16. Then it, then the gap becomes 48 after the next second. Then the next second it falls 80. Um, so table B would be the one that would be the most likely. Number four, determine whether 5n squared or 3 to the n will have greater values at each of these n values. So we'll do 1 squared times 5. So 1 squared is 1 times 5 is 5. 3 squared is 9 times 5 is 45. 5 squared is 25 times 5 is 125. So those are the 5n squared values. Then 3 to the n so 3 to the first power is 3. 3 to the third power is 27. And then 3 to the fifth power is 243. So those are the values if we plug it into um, 3 to the n. So then we just want to decide which one is larger each time. Well, if n equals 1, then 5n squared is larger. If n equals 3, then 45 is larger, or the 5n squared. In part C, 3 to the n is larger. Number 5, select all of the expressions that give the number of small squares in step n. So to figure out if this works, you can actually just plug in the step numbers, right? So this is n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and see if they work. If they don't work, it's wrong. So 2 times 1 gives us 2 for this one, so that's good. And then 2 times 2 for the second one gives us 4 squares in step 2, and that's not true. n squared. So if we do one squared, that gives us one. Well, there's not one square in step one, so that's bad. Um, part C, one plus one gives us two for step one, so that's good. Um, two plus one for step two would give us three, and there are more than three squares here, right? There's two here, there's six here, and there's 12 here. So that fails in step two. n squared plus one. So if we did one squared plus one, that's two. So that's for step one is good. Um, two squared plus two would be four plus two, which is six. So that's good for step two. And then three squared, um, oh, sorry, I did that wrong. It's only plus one here. So that would be um, five there instead, which is bad. So n squared plus one. So two squared plus one is five. So that fails in step two. Then in part E, we have the step times the step plus one. So this would be one times two, which would be two in step one. So that's good. In step two, we would have two times two plus one. So here we'd have two times three, which is six, and that's good. In step three, we would have three times three plus one, which is three times four, which is 12, which is good. Okay, so this one, you're seeing the step here and then one more down here. The step here is two, and then one extra down here. The step here is three, and then one extra down here. So then if we head in step n, then we should have n for our height, 
and we should have n plus 1 for our length. And that will give us the n times n plus 1. Then in F, we have n squared plus n. So one way you can do this is if n times n plus 1 is good, you could think of distributing this n in. So another way to write this would be n squared plus n. So we would know this one is going to be true because those are equivalent expressions. Another way you can try and make sense of this is by looking for this, a square of the step one and then the step number. A square of the step number, so two by two, and then two more. So we have that two squared and then two more. And here we have a three by three square and three more. So then we would have an n by n square and then n more in the nth step. Um, then G says that we're doing n plus n plus 1. So in step 1, that would look like 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3, and that fails immediately in step 1. So that one's not good. Number 6, a small ball is dropped from a tall building. Which equation could represent the ball's height in feet relative to the ground as a function of time? So you've been looking at a lot of these in this lesson, and these are quadratic functions when we're bringing gravity into the equation, and it's going down, it's a down quadratic. So that means you're going to need to see the input squared, so we're going to have to see t squared, and it's going to be negative. And so if we look here, that's option B, and that negative 16 is gravity speed because that's going to drop at uh, or it, ha it has to do with gravity's speed um, but you're always going to see that negative 16 t squared when we're talking about dropping or throwing things um, that are going to fall number seven use the rule for the function to draw its graph so this is a piecewise function so we take it piece by piece so for this one, it's saying that we're going to have an output or a y value of 2 for all of these x's. So at negative 5, we're going to be at 2. And we see the equal sign, so it's going to be a closed circle. So this is negative 4 and negative 6. So negative 5 is right here and a height of 2, and we have a closed circle. Then at negative 4, it's going to be at 2. At negative 3, it's going to be at 2. At negative 2, it's going to be an open circle at 2, okay? Because we don't have an equal sign under here. So at negative 2, it's going to be an open circle at 2. And then we can connect um, those dots. Then the second part here is saying that we're going to be at 6 for all of these x values. So at negative 2, we've got the equal sign down there. So at negative 2, we're going to be at 6. So we want a closed circle. And then all the values from negative 2 to 4. Okay, so at negative 1, we'll be at 6. 0 will be at 6. 1 at 6. 2 at 6. 3 at 6. And then at 4, we don't have the equal sign. So we're going to be at x equals 4, we're going to have an open circle on the 6 so that we have all the numbers leading up to it being 6. So then you can just connect those. Then for this last part, whatever our x value is, that's our output. Okay, so if you wanted to do a table, I'm going to do a table just to kind of show you what it is also. Um, but 4 through 8, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we're going to plug in. So whatever x is, y is also. So if x is 4, y is 4. If x is 5, y is 5. x is 6, y is 6. x is 7, y is 7. x is 8, y is 8. So when we're when x is 4, we're at 4 with a closed circle because of this equal sign. Okay, so you got a closed circle here on this boundary. And then, um, you know, you can plot 5. I'm just going to skip to 6 because here's 6 is going to be at 6. 
And then at eight, we don't have the equal sign. So this is gonna be an open circle. So at eight, we're gonna have an open circle. And then you would just connect here. Number eight, Diego claims that 10, X, 10 plus X squared is always greater than two to the X and used this table as evidence. Do you agree? So in Diego's table, right, um, 11 is bigger than two, 14 is bigger, 19 is bigger, and 26 is bigger. So from this part of what he looked like, it, it appears to be true. But we know that this will start bigger, but eventually two to the X will overtake it because two to the X is exponential. So it starts with kind of slow growth, then it rapidly increases where quadratics start, you know, kind of start. Okay, so here on this positive side are gonna start rapid and then they're gonna slow down. Okay, so then that growth is gonna slow down. So he just needed to plug in some bigger numbers. So if I looked at, so we know two to the X is eventually going to overtake. Um, 10 plus X squared. So I'm just gonna do an example. So I, I just plugged in a, a number. So I'm just gonna plug in 10. So 10 squared is 100. So 100 plus 10 is 110. And then two to the 10th power is 1024. So certainly two to the X is bigger um, at that value. So when X equals 10, two to the X is larger. And I showed it right there. Number nine, the table shows the height in centimeters of water in a swimming pool at different times since the pool started to be filled. Does the height of the water increase by the same amount each minute? So we just look, how far did it increase here? So it went up 0.5 meters. 150.5 to 151 is 0.5 meters. And 151 to 151.5 is 0.5 meters. So yes. Um, it's growing or filling by 0.5 meters each minute. Then it says, does the height of the water increase by the same factor? Okay, so factor means that you need to divide these to figure out um, what they're increasing by. So we would take 150.5 and divide it by 150. And that shows us that this is growing by a factor of 1.00333333. And then when we take 151 divided by 150.5, we end up with 1.00333225. So they're very close, but it is changing. And if you did the next one, if you did 151.5 um, divided by 151, you're going to get 1.00331112. So again, very close, like they're the same to the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths place, right? But then they start to change. So no, very close, but not identical.